What are you going to do if you wake up one morning and nothing comes out of the tap? Hi, I'm Jonathan, the Provident Prepper. Water storage has to be one of the highest priorities for every prepper. We cannot overstate how important water is for so many different things. Now, storing water can be a little bit challenging, but in this video, we're gonna talk about how to go about it and the best containers to use. Join us as we explore the possibilities together. In this video, we will talk about how to store water and the kinds of containers that you want to use. Our emergency water needs include drinking or hydration, making sure that we have the water that our bodies need, hygiene, medical or first aid purposes, sanitation, and of course food preparation. The water that you have stored in your own home is always going to be your safest source of water in an emergency event. So just how much water should you store? We recommend at least two gallons per person per day for at least two weeks. Now we recognize this may be a bit challenging, but if you get creative, we're confident that you can do this. And if you wanna know what that much water looks like, we've got a few pictures here to help you. So one 55 gallon barrel could provide one person with enough water for 27 days. If you want to look at another way, it could take care of a family of four for about one week. Now, if you just wanna go and pick up your water storage at Costco, one case of the Costco water bottles is about five gallons, which means that it would give you two and a half days worth of water. If you wanna use repurposed two liter bottles, 18 of those would last for about four and a half days. If you use less water than the two gallons per day, great, you can extend that for a longer period of time. But it's been our experience that two gallons of water a day really isn't very much water per person. Especially when you consider that the average use per person is typically around one to 200 gallons per day. Let's explore some of the different possible containers that you could use for your water storage. Glass containers are ideal for water storage. They provide a true vapor barrier. They will not leach anything into that water, but they are prone to breakage, which means that in the event of an earthquake, you could lose your entire supply. So you would want to diversify it. We store water in all of our empty mason jars. They're gonna take up the same amount of space whether they are full or empty. So this is a great way to keep them full of water and clean. You can also use repurposed glass jars. Just make sure that you wash them out really well before storing water in them. There are two main type of plastic containers that are okay to use for water storage. They'll have a recycle symbol at the bottom that'll say number one or peat or number two HDPE. Either one of those are ideal. Examples of peat bottles include soda bottles, juice bottles, or most water bottles. And the HDPE plastic containers are things like your blue plastic water barrels or IBC totes and really nice water containers such as the water bricks. Even if your container is made out of a suitable form of plastic, you should not store your water in any container that has held a toxic substance. There are a lot of people who like to store water in bleach bottles, but the problem with that is that the chemicals have leached into the plastic while the bleach was in those bottles. Even once you've dumped it out and rinsed it out, you've still got those chemicals inside of the plastic that can leach back into the water. Could you use this for hygiene purposes to wash your hands? Absolutely. I just wouldn't use it for drinking water. An easy way to build your water storage is by picking up cases of water bottles when you go to Costco or another store. The problem with this is that this water really needs to be rotated because it's made out of a thin plastic. So it's great if you're using disposable water bottles all the time, this is a really nice, convenient way to do it. The problem with this is that it produces a lot of waste, so you might wanna take that into consideration. These are, however, extremely practical for emergency evacuation purposes. The ability to throw a whole case of water in your car is just a great thing. We would advise you to avoid storing your water in milk jug type containers. And the reason why is because these are engineered to degrade quickly, so they will start to leak in your storage. So be very careful about purchasing your water for long-term storage in this and don't ever 
fill up used milk jugs for water storage. The problem with using milk jugs that have contained milk or juice or anything like that is that that jug will harbor bacteria inside of the plastic which will leach back into the water and create a problem. So just avoid this. There are so many other choices. Water bottles that are made of the thick plastic such as Arrowhead or the Crystal Geyser, both of these are great for long-term storage. We have a friend whose water storage is underneath the beds in her home. So what she's done is she's taking used two liter bottles and cleaning them out and filling them with water and storing them underneath the beds. Perfect way to build your water storage and not have it take up very much room. The left hand side is some two liter bottles that we have in our water storage. And I like to date the last date that those water bottles were rotated just so that I can keep track of that. One important thing is that if you are storing water in repurposed bottles, you need to clean them out really well or you can have some serious issues with water contamination. What we do is we wash out the bottle in nice hot soapy water and then we will create a sanitizing solution by filling up the sink with cool water because you don't want to put chlorine in warm water because that makes the chlorine dissipate faster. We fill up the sink with cool water and then we add some chlorine to that, a few tablespoons, and we let those bottles soak. The contact time is really important. So about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, and then we dump out the water and we let it air dry. That provides a little bit more contact time and make sure that those bottles are nice and clean. And make sure that you pay special attention to the inside of the lids, that they are really clean. If there is some type of a cardboard insert, I would take those out and throw that away. There are other commercial sources that you can look at including things like these water pouches. They are quite a bit more expensive, but they are handy to store. Another commercial source is canned drinking water. Now these are relatively expensive, but they are nice in that they have a 50 year shelf life. And they are nice because they are not quite as vulnerable to heat as the plastic bottles are. When plastic bottles get hot, the plastic becomes volatile and leaches more into the water. With these cans, it doesn't really matter if they get hot. It matters a lot if they freeze because the cans can split. But if you've got the money, this is actually a pretty good option. I love these five gallon water cubes. We diversify our water storage, right? It's stored in a lot of different containers because we want to make sure that we have what we need when we need it. John, as buff as he is, cannot put one of those 55 gallon barrels on his back and take it with him. We have all kinds of different containers but this is one that I really like. And the reason why I think it's so nice, it's not easy to carry because it's still heavy, right? It's over 40 pounds, but it's manageable. But with a spigot on it, I can turn it on its side and we can use it as a hand washing station or to easily dispense water. I just really like the cubes. And there's a variety of other portable water containers. Some of them have wheels. A very common water storage container is a 55 gallon water barrel. These hold a lot of water in a small space but obviously they're gonna be extremely heavy to move. One system that we have tried and liked is the Titan Ready stacking water barrel system. You fill and take from the bottom barrel and it makes water rotation very easy. If you're going to store your water in 55 gallon barrels, it's important to understand that it can be difficult to access that water. You'll need to make sure that you store a bung wrench and we actually keep ours on top of the water barrel so that we don't lose it because it's difficult to open those bungs without a special tool. You can do it with a pair of pliers or something, but a bung wrench just makes it much easier. Then you need to come up with a plan of how you're gonna get the water out of that barrel. You can siphon it or you can purchase one of these hand pumps. We had one and when we went to use the water, we found out that that hand pump really didn't fit the water barrel and so it was a little bit tricky to use it. The other thing that concerns me is that I'm sticking that pipe into my clean water and there is a risk of contaminating my water. So we store the pump wrapped in plastic to try and keep it clean, but it's just all stuff that you really need to think about. And there are drum dollies that you can put your drum on if you would like to be able to move it. You may also have access to repurpose barrels. A lot of these are free or they're very inexpensive, but you have to make sure that they have never held any toxic substance and you need to make sure that they are food grade only. Now, if you notice, these are being stored outside. We have a small house and quite frankly, we don't have enough room to store a lot of water inside. We have a few barrels that are downstairs and we do that because our winters freeze and we wanna make sure that we have water inside that is ready to use and not frozen. 
but we also store barrels outside. Now notice they are up on a pallet and these barrels are white and so the light will penetrate them. So we have covered them in a black tarp. The other thing that we do is we make sure that we don't fill the barrels completely up because I've done that before. I got greedy, filled it all the way to the top. And in the springtime, when we went out and looked at the barrels, it was split all the way down the side. John likes 10% headspace. So make sure that you leave some kind of headspace at the top so that they don't freeze. Another product that we really liked was the Waterfall water barrel. This is a 30 gallon barrel that is self-rotating because your water comes from the tap through the barrel and then you use it out the bottom. So it's always rotated and ready to use. However, this is not for a climate where you have freezing temperatures or you have to drain that and take it inside for the winter. But it is absolutely perfect for my kids who live in Arizona. As you look out there, you can find a whole variety of water tanks that you can use. Some of them are very pricey, but they offer some real convenience and the ability to store a lot of water in a small space. There are also a variety of outdoor storage tanks that you can get. Some of these are stored above ground, some are buried beneath ground. If you're going to bury it though, you need to make sure that it is structurally able to handle that load. <laughs> Thus says the engineer. <laughs> okay, the other thing while we're talking about the, being able to structurally handle the load, remember that water is heavy. So make sure if you are storing it on an upstairs floor, that floor needs to be able to accommodate that weight. Another good option are water storage totes. The totes that you can see here hold 275 gallons of water. They can be repurposed, but again, you wanna make sure you understand what has been in those before. Mostly we would be using this for hygiene water or for watering animals or watering the garden. My absolute favorite way of acquiring and storing water is rainwater harvesting. Depending on the climate, you can harvest a tremendous amount of water off of your roof. It is also fairly easy to rotate. And so often we have people ask us whether or not their swimming pool can count as their drinking water. And the answer to that is no. We have filtered swimming pool water using a very high quality filter. And quite frankly, it still tasted nasty. And it was rated to remove chlorine and a bunch of different chemicals. So I would count your swimming pool water as hygiene water, but I would make sure that you have a different source for clean drinking water. Could you use it in an emergency? Yes, you could. However, I just wouldn't want to risk it. I would really want to plan for a different source of drinking water. I would really not plan on using swimming pool water for any kind of human consumption. If you really are planning on using your swimming pool as a source of drinking water, I would make sure that you practice, that you take whatever filter it is that you've been told will filter that pool water and you filter it and you drink it, not just one taste, but drink it and see whether or not it makes you feel well. I personally really think we should just stick with using it as hygiene water. Okay, let's talk about water rotation. Officially, the recommendation is that you should rotate your water every six months. That is painful. It is painful. And I don't think there's very many people that ever do that. It, okay, because we have real lives, right? So what we want to know is whether or not you really have to do that. Let's think about it. You have clean water you've put it in a clean container, what can really happen? You could have some of the plastic leach into the water, not gonna kill you. What I would say is if you are not gonna rotate it regularly, just be prepared to filter it with a good quality filter. And this also depends on whether these are being stored indoors or outdoors. That's true, because outdoors, the heat is going to accelerate that leaching into the water. So you're, it's more problematic. Seriously, do the best you can to rotate your water regularly. If you have the financial means, buy a system like the, the Titan Ready or like one of those nice water tanks where rotation is really easy. But if not, don't sweat this. Store the water. It's so much more important that you store the water. We have a friend who was telling us about a metal water barrel that they had stored in their basement. It was there for 50 years and they wanted to test the water and see if it was okay. So they scraped all the scum off the top and took a sample and took it in and had it tested and it was still safe to drink. Would I want to do that? No, that is not my intent. But clean water in a clean container, you really should be okay. So what about water treatment? This is a common question that we get. Do I need to treat my water? Typically, we recommend that if you have a chlorinated municipal water supply, you don't need to add any additional treatment that does have some residual chlorine that will take care of any treatment need. 
As for untreated water, you have the option of treating it as you store it or as you consume it. We have a great post that goes through exactly how to treat water in a 55 gallon drum. If you click the card in the corner, we'll take you to that post and it gives you all kinds of different options and, and things that you need to consider when you're doing that. But generally, if you are going to treat it when you store it, you would want to use a quarter of a teaspoon of calcium hypochlorite or two tablespoons of fresh unscented chlorine bleach. Now for smaller containers, the recommendations here are from the Clorox company. And it depends on which variety of Clorox you use. These are the only three that they recommend you use for water treatment at all. Do not use any of their other products for water treatment. But for a quart, you're looking at two drops of regular bleach. And that's only if your water supply is untreated. If you have a municipal water supply that has been treated already with chlorine, you don't need to add any other chemicals to that. We sincerely hope that you make water one of the highest priorities. Water is so important and you can do this without a lot of expense and a lot of effort, but it is so vital. Get it done. We invite you to visit the Provident Prepper, how to store water for emergency preparedness. In that post, we go through all kinds of different containers and treatment methods. And if you have any questions that aren't answered, the chances are they will be answered in that post. Another concern that we hear frequently is which water filter do I buy? How do I know? So we created an entire video on YouTube, emergency water filters. We go through some of our favorite picks. We really work to teach you what you need to look for in a water filter and why you need that because every water source is different and you need to find the right filter to meet your specific needs. Another video that you really should take time to watch is making water safe to drink. And in this video, we go through the different disinfection techniques that you may want to use to make sure that your water supply is safe to drink. Check them out. Now you know what to do. Sit down right now and make an action plan that makes sense for your situation. And then let's get busy. Now is a perfect time to get those containers filled. And now for the question of the day. What is your favorite way to store water for emergencies? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.